Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy back at it again. I appreciate y'all tuning in. I apologize for the for the lateness. I was just on a on a, a round table representing for these bills, man. I had these Giants fans and Jets fans, Dolphins fans talking a whole bunch of mess. I was like, nah, not on my watch. I was like, fellas, I gotta go, but let me give you this smoke before I get out of this room, man. I'm gonna tell you, man, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it right the F now, man. These Dolphins fans, these Jets fans, really think they have it. They really think they have it. I'm not even capping with you. They really think that the Bills ain't shit. They really think Zach Wilson's going to go toe-to-toe with, with Josh Allen. They really think Tua's going to go toe-to-toe with Josh. I, I can't believe it. I couldn't fathom the. I couldn't fathom when I was here. I couldn't. And if... if, uh, if Y'all gonna have to catch it, man. I think it was the the show. The uh, the show's called the Shakedown. Some real good. I mean, listen, man. I was ready to give them all the smoke. They weren't ready for it. They thought they thought we were gonna come in. I was gonna come in and represent for the Bills and just be be nice. They thought I was gonna be the nice Canadian. Oh, come on, son. Come on, man. Don't play with us. Don't play with us, man. Somebody said, yo. Somebody came through and said, yo, I fuck with the dude right go. Hey, my dude is kind of my raggedy. I got a raggedy dude right, but it's all good. Ladies and gentlemen. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. It's the Rico Report. You know what I'm saying? Welcome. If you guys are tuned in for the very first time, smash that like. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and do that right now. It's Rico underscore BF underscore. Hit that up. We got a lot of things to talk about right now, man. Um, <clears throat> a few things. I mean, we got three topics that we're going to hit up today. And uh, obviously, one of them has to do with former guard slash center Mr. John Feliciano. We're going to talk about that. I definitely want to talk about our guy, Mr. Saban, talking a whole lot of mess and some smoke came his way and he decided to back down. Fam, once you open your mouth and let the toothpaste out of the tube, it's a wrap. You are you are chopped liver. They're coming for your ass. And that they did. Oh, I'm just sorry. I shouldn't have been opening my mouth. Man, you should have shut your ass up because now people are going to be digging into you and Yo, it's it's a it's, listen, man. Now, everywhere, if people weren't coming from Bama before, and I'm, I mean, I like college ball whenever I can watch it. And there's a lot of Bama fans out there, and there's a lot of people that hate Bama. You feel me? And there's gonna be a lot of Bama fans that are gonna be. I mean, they're gonna be coming after y'all, man. All that, all that chatter is a is a wrap. <laughs> Yo, Saban talking mess, talking mess to Deion Sanders, talking mess to Jimbo Fisher. Yo. Some people just need to shut their mouths. Be quiet. You feel me? We go, we go get into that as well. You know what I'm saying? So uh hold on. I gotta, I gotta because I wanted to bring some some guests on with me. So I'm gonna see if they're if they're still trying to come through. I'm gonna send that invite out. But yo, how are you guys doing today? This is gonna be a show where I bring up uh, my two, my two, two topics that I want to hit up. And then if you guys have a topic y'all want me to talk about, y'all know what to do and bring that up. But first thing I want to get into is this this delusion. These AFC East, our AFC East foes have. You know what I'm saying? So it all started with me jumping on a spaces. There was this big spaces. And uh, I saw fellow Bills Mafia. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody knows LaShawn, right? I think LaShawn James. And LaShawn was in there. And I was like, yo, let me let me jump in and and, and talk my shit. LaShawn Jermaine. That's what I was. LaShawn Jermaine. Um, I said, let me talk my shit, man. Let me get in there and, and do my thing, man. So LaShawn was in there and he was repping. And uh, I came in and they, and I put my hand up. I said, I want it. The amount of slander the Bills were taking, right? And when you can't talk shit about the Bills, you know what they do? They lost four Super Bowls. Somebody said, fix my do right now. I don't want to fix it, man. If I fix it, because I got a haircut, so I'm trying to keep it keep it tight, keep it right. You feel me? So I'm just going to keep my do rag on for now. So if it's crooked do rag, Rico, it's all good. I just put on a put a little something on so I can kind of keep it fresh because, you know what I'm saying, your boy's going to Buffalo this weekend. We're going to talk about that afterwards. But anyway. I got into the spaces, right? And the Bills haven't won a Super Bowl. They lost four times in a row. You know what I mean? The same junk they keep talking. Like, that was it early 90s, fam. Like, some of y'all weren't even, you know what I mean? You guys still had your diapers on. And you, you want to talk that mess. Come on, man. Like, start with something at least the last five years. At least let's talk about something in the last five years, right? Because they can't. So, all this shit talk is happening. So then I get hit up 
fam, I need you to come on my show. You brought that energy. They didn't know. They don't know about Rico, right? But anyway, I come on the show. They think because I'm Canadian, I'm sweet. You know what I'm saying? I'm be nice. Don't forget. Don't, don't get it twisted, man. Some Canadians can, can get at your ass. You know what I'm saying? So I jump on, I jump on this show, and there's a whole bunch of blue. I said, oh, shit. There's a whole bunch of New Jersey, New Jersey Jets and Giants fans in here. All right, let's do it, right? So they say, yo, you can start the show off. So I said, fam, I was doing some digging. The New York, excuse me, the New Jersey Giants and the New Jersey Jets, the last five years have the worst record. Both of them bitch asses have the worst record in the league. They're 22 and 59. And they're going to come here and talk, oh, the Bills are this and the Bills are that. And Zach Wilson's going to. Last time I checked, Zach Wilson still has to prove something. You know what I'm saying? You haven't proved anything yet, my man. Chill out. Chill the F up. The Giants have Daniel Jones. Who knows how long Daniel Jones is going to be sitting at quarterback because Tyrod is ready. He's warming that shoulder up. He is ready. So I don't know what y'all talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I had to come on there and represent. But boy, I, I sometimes it's it, like, I don't know if you guys do this enough, but sometimes it's really important for y'all to jump on like any other like AFC East or NFC, whenever they're talking about bills and see what they say. It's super interesting. You have some people that shows respect. We had, uh, uh, there was a young lady that was in the, in the room as well. She was talking about the Ravens. All I had to say was pick six. Be quiet. <laughs> it's, or, it's over with. Because that's the last time we played y'all. And it was a pick six. And it was, it was brutal. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and you guys already know me. I love Lamar Jackson. That's my guy. But, you know I mean, we got to call it what it is. Stop it. The AFC is going to be a gauntlet. But let's, let's, real, let's, let's, let's be real. And then this, the Jets fan came in and said, we're going to win 10 games. I said, what? In the AFC, you think you're going to win 10 games? Uh, I said, I, I don't know what to tell y'all. Wake up. Wipe the crust from your eyes and wake up. You're not winning 10 games. The Bills won 11 games last year. Was it 11 games that we won? 11 games. And you're going to sit and tell me the Jets are going to win 10 games? Boy, for you, if you don't stop, <laughs> if you don't stop that mess, y'all better, y'all better stop right now, man. Y'all better stop right now. But yeah, it's it's very interesting. If you guys don't have a chance to to jump on there, uh, shout out to my man Lashawn. Lashawn came in was giving them the business. Lashawn came in was giving them the business, and I was like, "Yo, lashawn has got this, man. He don't need me." And I, I I came I came, you know what I'm saying? I was I was reloading because I'm I'm listening to Lashawn get. I took the shotgun out. I'm I'm getting my shots ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, put it on them. And then that's when I heard Jets are winning ten games. And then they then they doubled down in the show that I went on today. By the way, the show is called The Shakedown. Shakedown New York. If you if you YouTube that, you can see I was on there earlier. So I think I represented. For the very short time that I was on there, I, re I think I represented. But anyway, I digress. Uh, hold on a sec here. I digress. But anyway, so... Yeah, man, I'm reloaded, baby. I'm reloaded. Let's go. That's exactly what I had to do. And I had to give it to them. I had to give it to them again. So then right before I was leaving, they're like, yo, we didn't expect this dude to come on and cook like this. They don't know. They just don't know. I mean, sometimes you got to let them know. <laughs> yo, Antonio Dingo, he was hot. It wasn't he. It was they. There was a, it was like a, a panel of 10 people in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I was the, I was the lone bills. I mean, shoot. I can I can try to duke it out with the best of them, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they just don't know, man. They just don't know. But anyway, um, so news for y'all before I get into our, our show. Uh, your boy is gonna be going through to Buffalo uh, this weekend. I'm flying in on Sunday, and uh, I'm meeting up with uh, with my man uh, Z Bat, and uh, we're going to an event, and uh, we're going to the Western event, and uh, there's gonna be several players that'll be there. So. Josh is going to be there. Deion Doc is going to be there. There's going to be several players that are going to be there. So we're going to, so Z-Bot and I are going to be meeting up and uh, we're going to put some content for you guys. So it's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be outdoors. That's the kind of only bummer. So we're going to have to make the best of it. So, uh, so I'm looking forward to it, man. So if I have a chance to, to meet with any of y'all, I don't know what me and Zach are doing, but if we're going for a bite to eat, you know what I'm saying? If you in the area and you ain't doing ish, come through. And hang out with your boys, and we're gonna be doing it right. So, uh, so let's get this, let's get, let's get this thing popping, man. My man Brian Bowers, what up, Brian? What's happening, bro? He's like, yo, still in the offseason, more Rico, just dropping by to show some love. My G, smash that like, my man Brian Bowers, BB, BB. I'm gonna have to, uh, because this is the offseason, you know how it is, man. We're gonna, we're gonna have to chop it up 
and, and have you on the show, baby. So uh, be ready for that, man. The invite is coming soon. And by the way, that's what I want to start doing, right? It's the off season. So if you guys feel that like you want to jump on there and jump on with me and, and co-host and come in for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes and, and chop it up and bring your topic, we can do that. That's what I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying to incorporate. It's always been that way, right? Buffalo Phoenix has always been the bridge to the players, the bridge to. So why not in the off season come and bring you all onto the show? So that's what we're going to be doing. Man. So uh, let, let's get it going. Man. So your boy's going to be a Buffalo wit. Um, my man, z -Bot. he's coming from Rochester. I don't know what the difference is, the time to drive from Buffalo to Rochester or Rochester to Buffalo. It was at an hour, give or take. So, yeah, we're going to be doing it. We are going to be doing it. So um, that's what I wanted to get. I wanted to get that off my chest with these, these giants. Giants and Jets fans and Patriots. Come on, man. They tripping. They really are tripping. I don't know what, what got what got into them. Um, what was the, the pod you were on, uh, Rico? Uh, it was the shakedown. I think it was called the uh, – let me, let me actually get it right down. So I want to make sure that uh, it's down. It's, yeah, it's called the Shakedown New York Giants Rush. Shakedown New York Giants Rush. And uh, they're live right now as we speak. So, like, catch the playback. Play it at the beginning because I was there for, like, the first 10 minutes. I cooked them for 10 minutes, gave them the life that they needed for that show, and I was like, I'm out. But I'm, I'm going to breathe that life back in next time because they said, yo, we need to have you back on there. So it's, it's good. Yeah, it's live right now, man. It's live right now. But good people out there, man. It's fun. I, want, I didn't want to leave, but I was like, yo, I got my own shit that got to handle. So we're going to do that. Anyway, so I got I got something to play for y'all, man. So I don't pay attention to too much collegiate ball. But when I do, I mean, it's fun. I try to watch you mean the top teams. But there was something that happened uh, this the last few days. And I want to play you guys a clip. And I want to I want to I want to I want to play you guys the spice. So check this out. We built him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You can find out anything you want to find out what he does and how he does it, and it's despicable. It really is, and it's a shame we have to sit up here and have this conversation about things we do. And it's it, it personal to us? Yes, it is. It's personal to A&M, it's personal to our players, it's personal to our coaches, and everybody involved. And I know the guy. know him really well. It's amazing that we're allowed to do those things. It's really despicable. And I, and I hate it for our players who are coming here who did things the right way, have done things the right way and will continue to do things the right way. I apologize to you, the people who insult you publicly the way they're doing it. And our fans, I, I, I apologize to you guys for people saying those things about Texas A&M. But I promise you this, there are, no, there are no violations. There are nothing wrong. The czar of football. This is the worst thing, man. When you have someone that you may have worked with in the past or you may have had a relationship with in the past, and then you go and run your mouth about that person. I mean, it's no different. For, it's like a breakup. You, you you break up with your with your girl. You break up with your dude and whatever. And then you start going to talk ish later on. And then your partner, whoever you were with, was like, oh, so that's what you're going to talk? You're going to talk shit like that? Do you want me to air your business out? Do you want me to? All right, here it is. So sometimes you just sometimes it's just best to just keep your mouth shut, Mr. Saban. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been in the, you've been in the game long enough. You've been winning enough, enough, you know what I'm saying, national titles. Just just be cool. If freaking Dion's Jackson State gets the number one corner in the as a recruit, all right, you snooze, you lose. For you to go make up that they paid him a million dollars. And I'm telling you right now, the player, I forgot the, the player's name, but uh, the young the young man was like, if I got a million dollars, why is my mom still in a three-bedroom apartment with five kids? If I got a million dollars, you don't think that I would I would have got my mom's out of there? Come on. Come on now. So <laughs> it's it's a, it's it's just funny the way that that plays out, man. By the way, I got to give a shout out uh, to my man, Jeff King. Shout out to my man, Jeff King. That's my guy right there. Rico and the rest of the you fanatics. Damn glad to catch a live show and see all on here. Heartfelt condolences to the city of Buffalo and the people of Buffalo and the victims and the families involved. I spoke on it last week, Jeff, and I'm going to get back into it. So, um, and I'm going to get, I'm going to transition back into it. I appreciate you, Jeff. You guys, you already know what it is, man. And if, if it were, if it were, if it was close enough, man, I'm going to drive to your ass. You know what I'm saying? In, in Auburn. I think it's Auburn. And I don't know the distances be between Buffalo and Auburn, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going I'm to really, I'm going to think about that, man. Cause I'm going to see what, what the deal is. But anyway, real talk. You guys already know how I feel about this. You guys already know, um, there's no place. There is no place for bigotry. There's no place for racism. There's no just we're too we're too advanced in life 
what I'm saying? We got bigger problems, you know what I'm saying, to deal with, you know what I'm saying, than to deal with some people taking other people's lives. Like, like to, to, for you to sit, I mean, you guys already know how I feel about that. We all feel the same. Let's put it that way. We're all in the same boat when we look at these things. We've come a, too long away for us to be still acting a fool. You know what I mean? Acting like a, a like acting like a nutcase. You got to be crazy. You got to be ugly. You got like your your heart is black for you to go do something like that. But what is beautiful is everybody coming together. You know what I'm saying? No matter what your social status is, you come through and you rubbing shoulders with everybody because it's in the name of love, man. It's in the name of of healing and coming together. And and there's some people in here in this room potentially, Jeff King included. That had people, you know what I'm saying, affected by this person. So at the end of the day, man, like there's no there's no room for that bullshit. There's no room for that. There is no room, man. And if you hear some people talking greasy and saying some stupid shit, it's always the, you know what I'm saying, the people you see some dude and you say, oh, they're just talking shit. Ah, you know what I'm saying? It, it, there's no more of that, man, because you just sometimes you just don't know. You just don't know, man. But anyway, it's disgusting. It's just sickening. And it was good to see the players go out there and show some love and respect and, and you know what I mean, and, and volunteer their time to do that stuff. It's love. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to my man, Jeff King. Uh, and shout out to those that are going through it. You know what I'm saying? Emotionally, they're going through it, period. Whatever you're going through in life, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, all love. All love, man. Anyway, back to Nick Saban and his bullshit. Nick Saban, keep your mouth shut, man. Keep Dion's. And any other coach's name out your mouth and just handle your program. Yeah, you know I mean, you guys are off a fresh loss. Just chill, man. You you be all right. Everybody still goes to Alabama, man. My my brother in law is a big Bama guy. You guys will be all right. Let Jackson State do what they do. You know what I'm saying? Let all let all them cats do what they do. But you sitting here talking that. Don't do that. Jimbo Fisher's like, yo, go and look into his shit. I don't know. I Deion Sanders was supposed to get at his ass, but I haven't seen the clip of Deion getting on. I might even try to find the audio, but nonetheless, you can't, you can't, you can't coach like that. You just can't, you can't be talking shit like that. Just mind your business, do what you're supposed to do and call it a day. But you know how, you know how people are, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's almost like I, I'm used to getting everything I want. And now that I see other people doing it, they're like, no, fair. Man, I want some too. <laughs> Boy, you've been getting it for a while, man. Let some other, let some other cats do it, especially with this NIL. Name, image, and likeness or something like that. Yo, these players are now able to do what they do, right? YouTube channels, whatever. They can get money however they please. Let it be. Let it be. Now, I want to get that out of the way and really get into the nitty-gritty. The nitty-gritty. And I need, and, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. Well, John Feliciano. John Feliciano was a a good a, he was it was a good piece for the bills when we brought him on veteran guy veteran leadership by the way i gotta i gotta stop and, and show love to my man cardillo linder cardero always love and i gotta give that to you because that is what it is man cardo says yo let's go georgia bulldogs yo you <laughs> give it to save it man you gotta give it to save it baby <laughs> Appreciate that super chat. That's all love. And I, you know, you know, it's always been like that. Cardell Linder has been watching and following for a long time. That's a long time viewer and, and sub and family. That's fan member, man, of the, of the Buffalo fanatics, man. When you've been watching and rocking for a while, appreciate that love. My G really do. You know, you already know what it is. Go Georgia. You know what I'm saying? You must be happy. James Cook is on the squad. But anyway, anyway, John Feliciano was on, um, I think our Ar Ariel Hawani. I think, I, am I saying that right? Uh, another fellow Canadian that uh, is, a, is a Bills fan and a Bills fan, excuse me, and covers the MMA and a few other sports. And uh, John Feliciano was on his uh, his podcast. And before I get into the main topic, John, John Feliciano, we can't hate. He was, at the time that when he was on the squad, he was good leadership for this team. I'm not going to sit here and slander him, but he was good leadership for this team. You know what I'm saying? He played hurt, and it was there were times where he he brought a nastiness to this team. There's no question. If anybody tells me he did not bring a nastiness to this team, it's a lie. That's cap. You know he did. There was a difference when John Feliciano was in the game. Now, when it comes to skill level, was he the most skillful player on the, on the, on the line, or at least the top five? Debatable. 
debatable. And Bobby Johnson finally, or if it was Bobby Johnson or somebody else, but Bobby Johnson, fine, we'll just say Bobby Johnson because he's the O-line coach. We'll give him that credit, but I, I don't want to give it to him fully, but we'll just do it for the sake of just doing it. We'll give him that credit and and say that he made the change and decided to, to put Feliciano on ice and bring on Ryan Bates. Simple as that. Now, John also was going through some things in his career, right? There was at one point he talked about in this pod, he talked about suicide and thought, thought, thought about taking his life. And for those that are affected by that or have been affected by that, like I have personally, I had my best friend take his own life, my very best friend years ago. That stuff still kind of, you know, it messes with you. So you understand people go through some shit. You know what I'm saying? I have my own feelings towards it. You know what I'm saying? Me and wife you always argue about this, and I, I she she doesn't like my feelings towards it, but I, I don't really share too much. But I've had that happen. So I understand that people are in this pos- a position where they just feel they just can't go on. So you don't want to make light of that for John Feliciano because he was going through it and he was able to fight through it and and kind of you know what I'm saying, get his life back in order. And he and he's good. So you know what I'm saying? So like Suicide is not a joke. It's really not a joke. There's some people that are going through some nasty things, man. Nasty things. Uh, I remember working with a colleague, a colleague of mine a few years ago. He was a, a new supervisor. He came in and um, he was a military guy and he was a former military guy. And then he started working with us. And as anyway, uh, and, I, and I, I bring this up for a reason. Right. So as we're talking, he uh, he was telling me about like, you know, when he was in the, in the military, he didn't have a good experience there because he would be bullied and all, everything in between. And to the point where the bullying got him like ready to like take his life to the point where, and I, and I had to ask him, so what is it that goes in your head when you're thinking about like those acts? He's like, honestly, the way he's like, the way I can explain it for me, not for anybody else, for me is, you know, that the thoughts that you're having in your head aren't the right thing to do, but like, there's an overwhelming feeling that comes across to you that just pushes you towards where, wherever he's like put it this way it's like putting your hand on a red hot stove and you want to pull that thing off really bad but you can't he's like and that's the feeling that i had and i when he put it that way and i was like man that's insane how some people will go through stuff like that so john feliciano going through stuff like that you feel for him you know what i'm saying so he he was, he was pouring out his heart so he was he was already in a candid um he was already speaking candidly. So he was being open. So you got to respect that about players because a lot of players just give you the old, the old, you know what I'm saying? PR answers and move on with life. You know what I'm saying? But John Feliciano had more to say when it came to football. So I'm going to play you guys a clip and we're going to talk about it. By the way, for those that are tuned in for the very first time, do me a favor. Let's smash that like. If you have not subscribed to the Buffalo Fanatics, please do me the favor and smash that like and subscribe to this channel. If you have not become part of the Bing Squad, support BF.com. You know what I'm saying? If you guys want to support us, jump in and become a BF squad. If you guys have been if you guys have been following BF for the longest time in the chat, there's you're able to say how long you've been uh, a Bing Squad member. So do me a favor. Throw me, throw me those comments in there. I really want to read them and see how long you guys have been part of the BF uh, Bing Squad, and we can go from there, right? And I'll start reading them a little bit. But uh, if you guys are here, smash that like. Uh, follow me on Twitter right here, Rico underscore BF underscore. Um, so let me play you this clip that kind of has people kind of talking right now. And, and let's dissect it because I, I'm not trying to throw shade, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it, and we're going we're gonna, to gonna really – let me just let me just play the clip. Knowing that it was probably coming to an end in January, um, can you describe how you felt in Kansas City? I mean, heartbreak. I, I don't even know if I'm over it, to be honest. But uh, because you probably wanted to be more involved and you know maybe the, uh, the run is coming to an end for you, I would imagine maybe a mix of emotions. Can you describe how you felt in the locker room after the game? Um, I mean, to be honest, I was like, Hmm. I don't know if I, I mean, I was definitely like sad for my, my player, my, my, my teammates. Um, I did what I can on the sideline. I, I don't like, I was coaching up people. I was every time Gabe scored, I was on his hip. I was like, I'm there for you. Um, 
But I mean, you can't lie. There was a part of me that wasn't like, oh, y'all feel like I want. Hold on. I'm going to reply in a minute. In a minute. Part of me was like, y'all got what y'all deserved. Pardon me? Really? Y'all got what y'all deserve? Are you are you that upset? I got to replay that because let the, let's, let that digest for a minute. I was puzzled just as much as you are. If you guys listen to this audio for the very first time, I was just as puzzled. I'm listening to this. How'd you feel about it? I'm thinking he's going to give us a cookie cutter answer. And you can kind of tell he was kind of like, should I say it? Should I tell you how I feel? You respect that he told you exactly how he felt. But then he made some other comments that you're like, well, hold on a second now. Hold on a second now. So let me replay this so we can really digest this. Knowing that it was probably coming to an end in January, um, can you describe how you felt in Kansas City? I mean, heartbreak. I, I don't even know if I'm over it, to be honest. But uh, because you probably wanted to be more involved and you know maybe the, uh, the run is coming to an end for you, I would imagine maybe a mix of emotions. Can you describe how you felt in the locker room after the game? Um, I mean, to be honest, I was like, hmm, I don't know if I, I mean, I was definitely like sad for my, my player, my, my, my teammates. Um, I did what I can on the sideline. I, I don't like, I was coaching up people. I was, every time Gabe scored, I was on his hip. I was like, I'm there for you. Um, but I mean, you can't lie. There was a part of me that wasn't like, oh, y'all got what y'all deserved. Cause, you know, I feel like I want, I would have been, I, I honestly, when you look back at that game, there wasn't, it was like they were playing football I and mean, there wasn't no, like, everyone was just going through the motions as in like, not like there wasn't anyone like challenging, like in the face of the KC's defense or like, there was no attitude out there. I feel like, and I feel like that's what I bring. And I feel like potentially if there was that, it would have been such a close game. But who knows? I might be wrong. I was coaching up on the sideline. Fair. It's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. If you're not on the field and you have your, your brothers that are battling out there. Okay. That's what you're supposed to do. We, we didn't have the attitude. The attitude, the last time I checked, you have a quarterback that is sitting there just, they follow that dude. That boy is leader-wise. Now, if we're not going to talk about quarterback or skill players, maybe he's talking about attitude on the sideline, nastiness. What he's talking about is he brings the nastiness, right? And he feels that we were lacking nastiness, and maybe that's why we lost. No, sir. Not even close. I'm sorry, but I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree. There's a reason that we went with Ryan Bates. There's a reason. I mean, I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to, to you have to understand. Understand something. When you're playing like the way you were playing at one point, there, there's, it's just, there's just change that needs to be made. And they were wanting to make that change for a long time. A long time. And you want to sit there and talk about you needed a nastiness. The last time I checked, we had Spencer Brown. That is the epitome of nasty. Deion Dawkins can has a nasty streak to him too. But you're talking about you would have brought a nastiness. What difference would you have made? No, sir. There comes, there's nastiness and then there comes a level of skill. A level of skill. And respectfully... You and OG Bobby Johnson are no longer on the team. Why? And a lot of folks would say that the line didn't develop as much as it needed to develop. There was there. I mean, Cody Ford is sitting here like, what wow, the second round drop? That guy was supposed to be the guy that kind of took over for you. Didn't pan out. He should have, but didn't pan out. Like, injuries happen, I get that. But for you to sit there and talk about we were lacking a nastiness, but this is not this is not what stands out to me. What stands out to me is the 
y'all got what y'all deserve part. Now that, you are on the same team as these guys. You battle the same way with these guys. Put your put your your pride aside, and this is the problem. His pride was 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 right beside him when he was making that comment. He was not able to put his pride aside, and he let that little nugget out. I'm, y'all kind of deserve what y'all got. What? What you mean? What you what do you mean by that, fam? Like that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. And that's probably why you had to go. Because that shit was probably permeating in the freaking locker room. I don't know. I'm speculating. Going by what this comment were, that these comments were. But that, that is craziness to me. Jeff King comes in and says, hey, I respect Feliciano for his contributions uh, to the Bills and their success. But that sounds like a scorned high school young man. You damn right, Jeff, who got dumped by a young lady who just felt they didn't mesh anymore. And then he decided to try to throw some shade. So that means you you're you talking shit to Ryan Bates is what you're talking shit about. That's what you're talking about. But I'm I'm sorry, I'm I I hate to break it to you, but Ryan Bates is more skillful than you. You're lucky you didn't get replaced sooner. But he's the more skillful lineman, and it and it and it shows because not only the show, it shows that we wanted him and he got paid for it. And his youth is on his side. And the only reason you probably be staying in the lineup is because your coach. That you've been you've been following around and Bobby Johnson kept your ass in there. Some would say that you didn't deserve to be in there. You should have been booted a long time ago. Come on, fam. We were missing a nastiness. That game was not about missing a nastiness. That thing was going left, right. That the ball was in the air, left, right, center. It was who had the ball last. It was nothing about nastiness. I, I'm just puzzled by that. Am, am I tripping? You guys let me know. Get in the chat and let me know. By the way, B. Sully, thank you for that super chat. I appreciate that. Please, whoever you interview from the Bills, ask them how they feel about this comment. Oh, you best believe it. But here's the thing. Whoever I bring on, if I'm lucky enough that they give a candid answer, great. But they may not. But you know I will. And you know they're talking about it as we speak. They probably said they're, it, there's a group chat right now. As soon as that message was sent or that tweet was put out there and that, that clip was out there, yo, you hear what John just said? The F was that? Yo, John, what are you doing, fam? Ah, I know I misspoke. I misspoke. The, the, the camera was on me. Uh, uh, listen, Ariel Halwani asked a simple question, man. He didn't expect the answer he got. I can tell you that right now. Hey, man, can you speak on that 13 seconds? I know you don't want it to. He's like, and you can see the hesitation. Ah, I'm gonna say it anyway, kind of thing. No, for real. Does John Feliciano think that he would have been the difference? Oh, come on, fam. Nah, you tripping. You tripping. And if you were the difference, you would have been brought back, and you would have been on the field at the time. But it wasn't. You weren't. You didn't mesh with what we were trying to do. And the minute, the minute we got Ryan Bates in our lineup. Everything changed. The line was playing a lot better. There a lot more. There was a little more. The more cohesiveness, and the run game got better, not because of nastiness, because there was more skill on the line. That simple. But here we are. Darrell Williams was holding it down on one side. Ryan Bates was holding it on the other side. Like, who are you going to beat out? Clearly. Ryan Bates should have been put in long ago. But we were bullshitting and letting, you know what I'm saying? Letting the line play the way they played. And it wasn't a horrible way they played. Trust me, it wasn't. But a change needed to be made. And they made the change. But you mad? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. There, you do bring some nastiness, but the nastiness has to come with a set of skills. And I'm not saying you're not skillful, but there was a more skillful player in Ryan Bates. And they made the change. You can't be mad at that. We waited way too long. If you if you really want to be honest, we waited way too long to implement Ryan Bates in that lineup. Maybe with Ryan Bates, with his skill instead of nastiness, we would have got the number one seed. Maybe. But here we are. Jason N says, Yo, Rico, 
bring him on the show to be judged. <laughs> Trust me, he's gonna take a, he's gonna take a break from being on any any type of any type of show. He's with the Giants now. And speaking of the Giants, the Giants were like, man, I can't wait till Bobby Johnson comes in. He's serious business. And I'm not going to shit on Bobby Johnson because Bobby Johnson wasn't a horrible coach. It's just that we didn't see any much improvement on the, on the development of our guys. And main, main, main one is, is Cody Ford. Like, what, what? come on, son. And Darrell Williams was just, and you see, and you see what we've done. We've obviously cha- made changes. Because just it was just our line just never could gel. So Bobby Johnson's gone. He's with the Giants now. Obviously, he followed Coach Dable. And obviously it makes sense that they bring in John Felicia. It's just craziness. I just can't I can't believe I can't I just can't believe he said that. I really like I can't. Corey Buffalo says I think he meant the organization, not the players. Still effed up though. Man, what about the organization? The organization is soft? Or not enough nastiness in the organization? Nah, he was directly talking about the line. He was directly talking about his replacement. If you're going to keep it real. So either he's talking about Ryan Bates or he's talking about Darrell Williams. Pick one. He wasn't talking about Spencer Brown because we already know what Spencer Brown is all about. So he's talking about one, one or the other. Maybe he's talking about Ryan. Maybe he's talking about Darrell Williams. He thinks that Darrell Williams should have been out. So, was he better than Darrell Williams? That's a question that a lot of people. I mean, you guys answer it. Would you have preferred Darrell Williams over Feliciano, or Feliciano was the person that should have been in? Darrell Williams should have been benched. Let's really talk about it. I'm curious. How y'all feel about that? Because that, to me, that 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 comment is wild. That's wild to me. But hey, it is what it is. By the way, I asked y'all a question of how long you guys have been been viewing and watching the show, and I'm and I'm loving what I'm seeing here. I got my man Namdi four or five years now. Love it. Scott Blakely's been watching for twenty five months now. Love it. And I feel like it's been longer than that, Scott Blakely. But I'll take that. So we've got, we got a lot of people that have been watching the Buffalo Fanatics for a long time now. And it, and it goes without saying, man, I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it, man. It goes a long way, man. It really goes a long way when, when you guys have been watching for a long time. We love it. Renaissance man says he would have kept that to himself. There's certain things you just got to keep to yourself. You know, you know how many times guys want to say what they want to say? And when they say it, when they say what they want to say, it's two, it's two reasons, three reasons they say what they want to say. A, because you're a superstar and whatever you say, they're not going to do shit about it because you're a superstar. B, because you are leaving the team and you're going somewhere else, so you're going to say what you want to say. Or, or C, you're retired, of the, you're retired and you've now become an analyst. So now you can say what you want to say. Right? Like when Cole Beasley, I don't, I don't think he's been signed yet, but when Cole Beasley is done with the game, I'm sure he'll have a few things to say about his time in Buffalo. And he wasn't shy about it. He said what he needed to say. And right now, this is the same thing that's happening right now. Look, Bill's Mafia, Bill's Mafia says, yo, the same shit happened with Quentin Spain. It was a little different. Quentin Spain saw the disrespect. <laughs> they brought in Brian Winters, I believe, at the time. And Brian Winters was a big bum. And Quentin Spain was like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you bringing this guy in? Like... I didn't allow a single sack last year. You guys are gonna do me like that? Yo, get rid of me. Yo, move me. I'll go somewhere else if you guys don't want to. You guys don't want to play me. And guess what? This guy was on the Bengals, and he was an impactful player for the Bengals. Good for him. But it's just to me, it's just crazy talk. Crazy talk. So I'm going through the comments and questions, um, and and seeing how you guys feel about this. Cr says, Yo, Mongo is just upset that they didn't use him as much in the game, and they moved on. That's what it is. Of course, that's what it is. He's upset. I'm sure he wanted to stay with the Bills. He wanted to stay with Josh Allen in the, in the squad. And then we, we felt like, yo, A, we want to get younger and we want to get better. Thank you for your services. See you later. It's that simple. And some could say that move could have been done last year. That move could have been done that last year where we could have moved on from him then. But we decided to bring him back. 
I was surprised by it because I thought that, oh, this is the, this is the year that they're going to let go of John Feliciano. And then we gave him a deal. We gave him a one-year deal to come back. So the writing was in the, the writing was on the wall kind of with that deal that they gave you. So you knew what was up. It was like a multi-year deal, but really it was just a one-year deal. Even then I was like, oh, interesting. Okay, we brought Feliciano back. All right, cool. Veteran, veteran abilities. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we got some guy with some, I guess some some veteran some veteran leadership. This will work out. It is what it is. War Warcorder says, "Yo, he must have meant that he wasn't out there getting a penalty like in the last playoffs last year." I mean, like, listen, the this is the this is what I sometimes remember of John Feliciano. Things like this. There were some good moments. Don't get me wrong. But pay attention. Pay attention to Dare Williams. And pay attention to John Feliciano, 75 and 76. Some would say he was a liability. And what do you do with liabilities? You make it not a liability by, by sitting it on ice. I mean, I can't give you any more than that, honestly. I'm just, I'm just shocked that he, he actually was candid enough to say that. You got to give him respect. He, he said what he felt. And not a whole lot of people can do that these days. So you have to respect him in, in that regard. But like sometimes things just don't need to be said. You just got to just keep it moving, man. Yo, that 13 seconds really blows. It sucks. I really wish I was on the field. But yo, those are my brothers, man. They're always going to be family to me. And that's probably still how he feels. That's probably still how he feels. These guys, these, these guys form a brotherhood, man. That team was tight. Renaissance, you're right, man. His ego got bruised. I mean, it got bruised in the last bit of the season. You had to watch. You had to watch how things were done. And that's just what it is, man. It, 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 to me, it's just, it's just sometimes you just got to take the L and keep moving, man. If you were about to say something, just kind of bite your tongue and be like, nah, you almost got me there, but I'm not going to. And I bet you after he said that, he's like, shit, that thing's going to circulate all over the place. And you can tell some um, media members were, were are pulling – pulling their punches when they're addressing this, this situation. Because they want to say, yo, fam, that's crazy talk, man. You were, you were clearly not the better lineman. The better, the better lineup right now at the time was Bates and, and Williams, Darrell Williams. That was the lineup. That was the best lineup, the best five. Because how many times did we talk about, guys, stop bullshitting and put the best five on the line. Put your best five. Okay, well, there's your best five. If you really want to compete and you really want to win the Super Bowl, they put the best five on the line. And your best five did not include John Feliciano. So sometimes you just got to take it for what it is. Sorry, Johnny. It's just what it is, fam. And now you're talking greasy? Come on, fam. You can't do that. You can't do that, man. That's not, that's not the right way. We're a very good team. We're a very good team, and we, we got better by adding Ryan Bates. And guess what? We didn't stop there. We moved on from Darrell Williams and Feliciano. So both of you guys were clearly not playing up to par. But if we're going to pick the lesser of the two evils, then we'll, we'll take Darrell Williams. <laughs> and that's what it is. And now both of y'all are not on the squad anymore. It's just the nature of the business. And that's the ugly side of the business, unfortunately. It's the ugly side. That's just what it is, guys. But very interesting that decided to, he decided to, to say all that. What up, Drippy? Drippy says, hey, solid two years he's been following the Buffalo Fanatics, and I don't, I don't regret that decision at all. My man, love that. <laughs> love that. So for those that have been watching the Buffalo Fanatics, please let me know how long you guys have been watching, man. My man Terrence Bland has been two years easy. Love it. You're saying my man Brian McGregor, just under four years. Love to see the growth. And, and listen, Fed, we're going to keep growing this thing, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Bills Mafia, from the beginning, before 2018 draft. My man, he's been watching for a minute now. Because we, ju we joined YouTube in 2017. 2017, man. We're what? We're 2022 now? That's pretty crazy, man. To be able to grow as quickly as we've grown to 20, what? We are 22,000 subscribers and we started late october 
2017, late October. So we've been doing this four years now. We appreciate y'all, man. Real talk. We really do. We we are not where we are without the support from y'all, man. My man South says, yo, I started here when we were at 500 subscribers, man. Sheesh. <laughs> appreciate y'all, man. Dayton says, yo, I've been following BF since like, what, 2019? Instagram wasn't owned by Facebook when I found your Instagram. Damn. And we've been rocking this Instagram for a minute now. If you guys have not followed our Instagram, please do. We are we are sitting just shy of 100,000 subscribers and followers. Yo, do we do us that favor and let's get that, man. Do us that favor and let's get that. <laughs> Ronald Wrigley says, yo, Mongo is a, a dingy ding. <laughs> a dingy ding ding. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's uh, I'm sure he's, he's, he's kind of sitting here like, shit, I shouldn't have said all that. But hey, here we are. And with who we're facing this year, we need it all. We need we need all the 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 firepower possible. We need all the firepower possible if we're gonna do if we're gonna be at if we're gonna do what we're supposed to do and win this whole damn thing. By the way, WB Duex says, "Hey, he's been at he's been he's been watching us for two years now." Josh Richardson, two and a half years. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Love it, love it, love it. sal has been watching since 500. Man, we got Jeffrey Hayes has been two and a half years. Salute, salute to you, Jeff Hayes. So if you guys have not followed or you have not become a Bing Squad member, jump in and become a Bing Squad member, man. It's that simple. You can even actually do it right now at the bottom of your, your chat. There's a way that if you wanted to, you can join that. Or it's just simple enough, just go to support, supportbf.com. And it's that simple. And that way you can just join the Bing Squad. And then boom, it'll let me know on the, on the screen who joins in. My man RC3 has been watching us since 5K subs. That's a long time ago, man. I love it, man. I really do. My man, Tyler, I think I've been here for what? The last two to three years? That's, that's growth, man. Let me tell you, man, if, you have been, if you've been watching the Buffalo Fanatics from when I had my backdrop was a white sheet and my microphone was a little, a little, little uh, what do you call it? It was an ice snowball. You've been watching us for a while. Yo, we've come up, man. I used to do my show on a little TV, TV dinner table. Because, I mean, I was like, yo, this, if I'm going to really do this, I got to do it, right? So I'm like, okay, let me find something that I can go into a little corner room. I had a room with, with like, the pipes from the bathroom. So every time the girls used the bathroom, the water would come down. And I'm like, I had to mute my mic. <laughs> okay, we're done now. We got to go. So we, we have come a long way, man. The white sheet was in the background. You could tell. You should have saw the, the cockamay freaking setup that I had. None of y'all would have known. But boy, oh boy, if you if I could have turned the camera at the time. And so we've really come up. And the reason we've come up is because of the support. Right. And that's that's you guys supporting our merchandise. That's you guys supporting with Super Chats. That's you guys supporting in just any any way possible. And that's allowed us to for me to pour back into this this uh, this whole thing, man. Humble beginnings. You're damn right. That's why I will never you'll never hear me. You know, me saying that look where we at. We yo, I always remember where we came from, fam. Trust and believe that. Humble beginnings for sure. You know what I'm saying? TV dinner, man. That TV dinner was like this. I could only fit my little laptop on there and the microphone stand. It was a little tripod. So I had to just make just right. There many times I had to like make, 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 make do. Oh, man. Craziness. Craziness, man. So smash that like for your boy. We're at what? 263 people watching right now. Smash that like for your boy and we'll go from there. So, uh, John Feliciano, man. Good luck with the Giants, honestly. I mean, I don't wish you anything. I don't wish anything bad on this man because I mean he's gone through some shit in his life. Don't wish anything bad on this man. Good luck with you and the Giants. Um, good luck with Daniel Jones. Bring that nastiness that you talk about to Daniel Jones. And and I don't know if you're. I don't even know if you're going to start on the Giants. Truth be told, they got they brought in they brought in that big. I think Evan Neal. I think that's who they they drafted, and they brought that, they brought two Georgia. I think two Georgia linemen. On that squad, fam. Good luck. Good luck, man. That's the only way I could I could I could I could, that's the only thing I can. I'm not gonna talk shit about John Felicio. I'm just saying, yo, questionable what you said. And good luck in New York, in, in New Jersey, if you will. Ryan Teal, what up, Ryan? He says, Yo, Rico, I replay your pods at work. That's why I haven't been live. Man, I appreciate you that you're here right now, man. Appreciate you. And for those that are watching off of uh if you're at work or you're working out um or you're driving, I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. So uh, it doesn't go without notice because a lot of times people can't catch the live shows. 
where they're working evenings or they're with the family and they catch it on the replay. So it's, it's, ju it's just as important for you catching it on the replay. So appreciate y'all. Appreciate it. Now, last topic of the day. And just like that, we got ourselves a new member on Dragon, Dragon Sun. And you know what? When we get new members, we bring out the bell. We bring out the bell. Bing, biggity, bing. Welcome to the Bing Swap, my guy on Dragon. You know what? This is what we're going to do. I haven't, I haven't done a giveaway in a long time. We have not done a giveaway in a long time. And I want to give away one of our BF shirts. I want to give away a BF t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? It's been a while. I've been, I haven't rung that bell in a long time. So I appreciate you, Andrew. You got me, you got me my, my wrist going. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, got my, you got my wrist going on that bell. So I appreciate you, man. Eric Lambert comes in and says, yo, love catching the live shows, man. Hard, hard left, hard on the left coast. Yeah, man. You all the way on the left coast? Good for you, man. I was actually ready to go to the left to uh to the west coast. Um, because my boy's getting married. And uh here's the crazy thing. I'm gonna give you a story. So my man is getting married to uh to his bride and he and he's uh my man mike my man mike is uh he's been acting for a while so he's an actor he's 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 always out west and doing his thing he's doing quite well for himself and he met himself a young lady and they're getting married but this young lady is not just a regular young lady where it's just you know what i mean some somebody that he's met this is someone that is the daughter of someone that we all know and uh, my man is getting married and i got invited to the wedding so i'm trying to work the logistics to get out there but the prices for everything has gone up, which is craziness. So my man is getting married in Cali and he's getting married to Eddie Murphy's daughter, Bria. So uh, so my man, Mike, salute to you. Um, we're going to try to make it work, baby, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I don't know if we can, man, because we've got the kids now and all those things. But man, would that be something? I'd love to go all the way to the West Coast. I really would. And not only that, you're going to the West Coast to, to, to be in a wedding. And your your man is getting married to you know what I mean Bria, Bria Murphy. Shoot, you got to that girl. Is, listen, man, good for Mike, and good for her because she got a good dude, man. That's my guy. And by the way, let me use that bell again, my man Riser. Welcome to the Bing Squad. <laughs> Bing biggity Bing. Let's go. Woo, feels good, man. <laughs> feels good to use the bell again. Let's go, baby. So Rico's killing it as usual. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> Fred Smith, Smitty. Feel you. So, yo, for those that are, I don't want to give away. If we can get to 10 new members right now, 10 new members, I'm giving away a BFT. I might even give away two. Let's do two. Let's get to 10 BF members, and I'm giving away two BFTs. You pick your color, and we'll go from there. So, last last thing before we get out of here, because I'm chopping it up with you guys for a little bit. Um, so, this season, I'm I'm looking to see who our breakout player is going to be. Like, who's going to break out? And we know Josh Allen's going to do what he does. We know, come on, Riser, you think I'm going to mess your name up, fam? Come on, no, 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 no. I got you, fam. I got you, bro. So, um, we're going to make the, we, we, who's standing out for you? James Cook. Now that's a name. Now here's the deal with this 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 whole running back rotation. It's going to be very difficult for James Cook. I mean, I've seen some people say that James Cook is is in the lineup to get Rookie of the Year. I don't know, man. It's, it's very difficult for someone to get Rookie of the Year when you share the backfield. You're going to be sharing the backfield with Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Duke Johnson. And obviously there's going to be some changes made because we can't keep all those running backs. So James Cook as the as the guy that you feel is going to break out. I mean, if he does, that's a great thing. That's a fantastic thing. I'm I ain't listen, you're not going to you're not going to hear a complaint from me. Ryan Teal comes in with OJ Howard. OJ Howard would be solid pick for a breakout player because he's a player that injuries have slowed him down situational you know what I'm saying of where he went to play didn't quite work out for him so now he's he's in a in a in a, a team that 
we'll air the football out. We're going to go to maybe two tight end sets. He gives us depth. He gives us matchup nightmares for the defense. Is he our breakout player? It's hella interesting. Terrell Bernard and Elam. They're going to have a standout rookie year. I mean, are we are we going to see? Because remember, when Trey White was a rookie, he almost got that rookie of the year. He only got beat out by Marshawn Lattimore. And even then, it was tight. But Marshawn Lattimore is still doing it today. Trey White is still doing it today as well. Obviously, because he got himself a second a second contract. But Bernard, I feel Bernard is going to do some, some nice things. Breaking out, per se. I'm looking for you, my guy that's been on the team. A rookie is a rookie, right? The rookies are going to come in and, and do what they do, but we know how coach deals with rookies. He doesn't really put a lot of oh, he doesn't put a lot of a lot of uh, responsibility on rookies. So for James Cook or for Bernard to 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 really bust out, it's going to be difficult because they're coming from a depth place. Elam is is clearly the the other corner. Could it be Dane Jackson that breaks out? That would be interesting. I would love to see that. Or maybe it's Gabe Davis. Could this be the year that Gabe Davis... Some would say that Gabe Davis had a breakout year last year. Does he really, really break out this year as that number two guy? And he he's, you know what I mean, 60 receptions. Could he be that guy? 50 to 60 receptions? I'm looking forward to it. That could be a big one. Gabe Davis breakout could be a big one. And he's confident as as ever and as he should be. Greg Rousseau. I would love to see Greg Rousseau break out, honestly, because a lot of the conversation was who is the better lineman coming out of the U? Was it going to be, was it George? Was it Phillips? I forgot his name. I think it's Phillips. The light skinned cat, Phillips, or Greg Rousseau. They were both on the same team and they did some damage. And then Rousseau sat out the year. And then he came came in, drafted in the 30th pick. Had a really start, a great start to the season. Batted down football, interception. Like, he was he was looking like the real deal. Then he, then he kind of hit a wall. But now you're going into year two with a more talented line. You got a future Hall of Famer on the other side of the line. But here, And here's another thing. A lot of people are not talking about this. But... Jerry Hughes played on the right side of the line. If I'm facing the quarterback, Jerry Hughes played on the right side. Mario Addison played on the left side. Coupled in with Greg Rousseau coming in with the rotation. Guess who plays on the left side of the line? That's Von Miller. Although he can play everywhere, but he primarily plays from the left side of the line. That's where Greg Rousseau plays. So are we going to start seeing Greg Rousseau flip over to the right side? That That's one thing that we should be paying attention to in camp. I'm really curious. I know Von Miller can play everywhere, but primarily he's always coming from the left side of the line, and that's where primarily Greg Rousseau played. So Greg Rousseau may have to swap over to the right. Him coming off the right-hand side, very different. I can't wait to see that, man. It's going to be very interesting. How are they going to play that out? Shout out to my man, the ref. He goes, yo, Rico, been here since day one. God bless. Yes, sir. I Listen, man, the ref is a funny cat because I, I remember the ref because the ref tried to, he tried to F with me. He made up a name. I think it was like a couple years ago. <laughs> he said like, Hey, uh, is ABC Johnson going to get drafted in uh, the, the sixth round or something? He tried to make up a name, right? And I was like, I don't know. I think I said something like, I don't know who that is, but I'll look into him, <laughs> right? He kept on saying this shit. I was like, yo, who the? F-? And I look up his name. I'm like, yo, this, this, this play don't even exist. Trying to mess with me, right? But sometimes people, and this is, this is why it's great for content creators. Yo, d- don't make shit up. <laughs> don't make shit up, man. Hey, is um is a Panasonic Panasonic spin power gonna be uh is he gonna be getting some playing time? Oh yeah, for sure, man. He's been great, man. Uh, uh he's looked amazing. No, you can't do something like that. So I remember 
the ref the ref was trying to trying to do me greasy i caught on to your shit <laughs> i caught on to your stuff man appreciate you though but yeah man breakout player um phillips would be nice greg rousseau would be nice to break out but I, i'm curious to see where they're going to line him up i know where we play we're on a, mo- a rotational basis by the way that's right his name was Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips is, is nice, man. He's gonna be a problem. He's gonna be a very, he's gonna be a very good player for the Miami Dolphins for sure. But I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And here, D. Handsome says something real good too. Don Handsome, I see you, bro. Boogie, that's one player I don't know anything about. And when I say anything about, I mean obviously you know I me. Mean? You watch the film. He came out of Wake Forest and all that. But like, like. We didn't really see much of him because a lot of times he was inactive. And when he did get on the field, he had some good moments, but not enough for us to say, oh, shoot, Boogie Basher. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to see how he pans out and where they're going to try to put him. Because he looked like he was an inside slash outside guy. But where? Where, did he, where is he? And we got Jordan, we got Phillips on the squad, Jordan Phillips on the squad right now. Um, there, there's just a, there's a whole lot of depth on this line. And there's a lot of people that are going to be break that are going to be trying to break out. So this is going to be um, a hell of an interesting time, man. A hell of an interesting time. By the way, my man Ruff comes in and says, "Ha ha, no worries, Rico. No more trolling from me. It was nice meeting you at the season opener. You're the best Bills coverage. Period. Super Bowl. Here we come, man. The ref, I appreciate you, man. I th- I was laughing my ass off when you did that. It actually made me stay on my uh, stay on my shit. Be like, yo, there's motherfuckers out here that are going to try to try to try, try to." Troll you, make you look like a damn fool. <laughs> so I was like, mm, if I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to let you know when I look into it. <laughs> That's real talk. But I'm going to tell you right now, these are the three players I'm looking forward to and seeing how, they, how this plays out. And this is nothing to do with breaking out. This is more to do with seeing what the team is doing, seeing the team bring on draft picks, seeing the team bring on free agents and you're sitting here on the team saying, okay, shoot, I got to step my game up or I got to maintain my positioning. So I'm, I'm going to be very interested in seeing how Devin Singletary and Zach Moss deal with the addition of James Cook, the addition of Aaron Cromer, the, I guess, promotion of Ken Dorsey. There's so many factors that play into how offensively a player is going to break out because there's some new, there's some new paces, some changes. So I'm going to be paying very much attention to Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, but more specifically Zach Moss because Zach Moss is on a, he's in an interesting position. He's in a position to solidify himself to come back next year, number one. But not only to come back next year, but to come back and be the one-two punch with James Cook. But he has to do it now. He has to prove himself this year, right now. Because if he doesn't, I could easily see him finding himself off this team. So then it forces us to make, to give Devin Singletary a new deal. That will keep him and James Cook in the backfield. And then it's going to be Devin Singletary with a brand new deal with James Cook. So Zach has everything to do with the decision that they make with Devin Singletary the following year. Because Devin is going to go into his, he's in his last year of the deal. So Zach has everything to do with the, in my opinion, has everything to do with the, with the, I guess the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's got everything to do with Devin, Devin Singletary's future with his team. It falls on the development and stepping up of Zach Moss. So Zach Moss is going to have to have a big year. So that's my one player that I'm looking to see if he does something or he doesn't. He's got to. But Devin has been getting better each year. But he's going into his first, last year of the deal and Y'all always talk about, hey, running backs are diamond dozen. You don't pay running backs, man. You go and get a new one. And they were they were already talking about Devin Singletary getting a whole bunch of carries when he was in college. 
And I was I was watching some film from Devin Singletary back when he was in college. He was nasty then and nasty now. So does he get a new deal? It all stems off of what Zach Moss does. Because they're both drafted in the freaking in the third round back to back from one another. So keep that in mind. So that's my number one guy. Number one guy that I'm going to be paying attention to is Zach Moss. Secondly, a player that we need to see take a leap or at least make a case. I don't want to say make a case because it's tough for me to say this player has to make a case. But more, I'll use the word solidify. That's the word I'm going to use. This player for me has to solidify his status on this team. And it's a name that's been in everybody's freaking, freaking mouth. And that's Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds is going to have to solidify himself as that dude in order for him to come back and get himself a second contract. TV deals are being done and all that stuff. So, I mean, the, 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 the cap is going to go up. Are we, willing, are we going to be willing to pay two linebackers in the excess of 12 to $14 million a year? That's going to be something. The last regime that McDermott and Bean were part of, they had Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis. For the longest time, those two worked well with each other. So it's not out of the realm for the Bills to give my man his deal. Now, in comes Terrell Bernard. Is Terrell Bernard going to be the guy that comes in and says, all right, man, we, we're, 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 we're glad to see our guy, Tremaine Edmonds, do good things. And, I mean, five years with the team, it's been great. See you later. We, we're not going to pay you, Terrell Bernard. Here we go. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm ready to, to go that route yet. We still got to play it out. But the second player that, I, that needs to solidify themselves as that dude that needs to get that contract so we can keep this team together is Tremaine Edmonds. So Zach Moss is my first guy. Tremaine Edmonds is my second guy. Who's my third player that I'm like, hmm, I got to pay attention to you. And the whole team has to pay attention to you because you need to either break out or you need to really step out and really prove yourself. Who is it? I think to me, to me, I think this is a, a no brainer who I'm going to say. Who do you think I'm thinking of right now? There's one more player that I'm saying, like, this is this is the year that you got to pretty much solidify yourself, step out, show yourself, be that guy. Who is it? And this this player is in a crucial position. Somebody said Joe Joe Pierre Joe Pierre says Cody Ford is that guy. No, I'm not thinking of Cody Ford. Although it would be nice, don't get me wrong, it would be nice for Cody Ford to really step his game up. But like, I think the might, might the writing might be on the raw for Cody Ford because now he's going into his last year of his deal, and I don't know if they're gonna give him a new contract. So it's not looking like that. He's not looking like that guy for me. Cody Ford is not that guy. Who are you guys thinking? Bada Bing says Ed, Ed Oliver. That's a good one. That is a good one. Because Ed Oliver, I mean, Ed Oliver had a really good year last year. And this would be a very good year for him to really break out and, and really establish himself as that, you know what I mean, three tech lineman that we thought we, that we know that he can be, that we drafted him in the first round for, where we drafted him eighth, eighth overall. That's a really good option. Ed Oliver. I'd love to see Ed Oliver really, I mean, he came on last year too, right? So I'd love to see a little bit more out of him, especially because now we have true one tech dudes. So yeah, man, I see it. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at you guys. Yes. Chad Hutchinson. Hutchins, excuse me. There it is. That's my guy right now. That's who I'm looking at. Dane Jackson. Dane Jackson has big shoes to fill. If you guys were on my show Tuesday, I had my guy, Alex Lucci, the thigh doctor. And if you guys thought this guy was just a, he's just a play doctor. No, nah, man, he's, uh, 
he he's he's really into that medical game, man. And he knows what he's talking about. And Trey White is out for a while. Trey White can come as can come back to the season as late as week eight after the bye, week nine, maybe. Can come back as early as week one, but will he be ready? Or we put him on IR, doesn't take a roster spot, and he comes back, you know I mean week three, week four, week five, around that time. Nonetheless, he's going to be out. And if we want him to be very coming back healthy as possible, we don't rush him back. In comes Dane Jackson. Dane Jackson is instinctual. Dane Jackson seems to be where he needs to be at the right time, right place. Did he make some grave errors last year? Yes, that's going to happen with a second-year player. But now he's going into year three. And year three usually is when players break out. Year three is usually the time where, okay, you've been in the game long enough now. You've seen the game slow down for you. You have a better concept of the defense. The defense hasn't changed. You've had the same coordinator the last three years. Okay, this is your time. Levi Wallace left. Levi Wallace was a very good player for us, especially being undrafted. He earned his keep with the Bills. Every year they tried to bring someone to take him off his pedestal. But every year he fought back and, and regained that positional, you know what I'm saying, uh, prowess at cornerback two. But now he's gone. So now it's Dane Jackson's season. Dane Jackson is the guy that I'm looking for. That's my third player that I'm looking for to break out, if you will, or solidify himself as a guy that, yo, you guys can trust me. I don't care if you guys drafted me in the seventh round. I can be trusted. I can be trusted. So I'm looking for Dane Jackson. So the three guys I'm looking at, and I'll probably put a fourth in there. But I'm looking at Zach Moss because he's he's gonna he's gonna affect what we do at the running back position for next year, all depending on how he does this year. All right. Secondly, Tremaine Edmonds. Do we bring Tremaine Edmonds back? Are we gonna have two expensive linebackers? He's a Pro Bowler. I mean, he, he's he's. He knows, I mean, he knows the league now. He's, he's going to be a vet, and he's still a young man. Was he, 24? I mean, these players are getting drafted at 22, 23. And he's going to go into his fifth year, so he's going to have some time on his hands. So maybe we can get a second contract out of him and get the best out of him. Or is he played out? Is it done? Lastly, Dane Jackson. So Dane Jackson, for me, is that next person that's supposed to step up. You know who I am looking forward to? Here's a fourth, a fourth player that I'm going to put out there. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Riser brought something up right now. And I see you, Riser. Riser brought up Matt Hack. And truth be told, Riser, Matt, that's interesting. Matt Hack obviously can be cut at any time. They restructured his contract to the point where he's got no guarantees. If they cut him, we get, there's no dead cap. It's a wrap. It's, it's, once it's cut, he's cut. Excuse me, Matt. Is it pronounced Hawk? I thought it was Hack. It doesn't matter. Hawk or Hack. But nonetheless, Matt Hack or Hawk, I think it's pronounced Hack, by the way, but he's a tremendous holder. And him being a holder allows... Tyler Bass to do his job and become one of the best kickers in the game that he is right now. So the fact of the matter is this. It's pronounced Hawk. Is it Hawk? Okay, my bad. Matt Hawk. So Matt Hawk is not a great punter. He had he had some doozies this year, this past year, where the thing just went up and came right back down. And you're like, what are you doing? But we are a high-scoring offense, so you're going to be handling that football a lot when it comes to PATs and field goals because this offense moves the ball. But your punting is a suspect. Therefore, we drafted. Not We didn't bring some guy in. We drafted the punt guard, Matareza. So Matareza hasn't done much holding the football. He's just a punter. 
So he's going to be practicing holding that football dearly. And if he doesn't get that thing right, and they feel confident enough, bye-bye, Matt Hawk. So in comes Matt Areza. And that's the one I'm looking forward to, to seeing how this plays out. Because his leg and his ability to kick the football and really get the hang time, number one, and depth, number two, is huge. Because there are going to be times where our offense is stagnant. And we're going up against a team that can really play. We have to split. We have to What's the word I'm looking for is, is to flip the field. You know what I mean? We, we're going to have to flip the field. And by flipping the field, we got to get that ball to the other side and allow our defense, okay, we've got some room now. All right, here are the things that we're going to, we're going to, but when you, when you, your offense does, does crap and you're like, oh my God, and you're deflated. And then the punt comes in and you shit the bed with a punt. Now you've given the other team momentum. They don't have to start from the 15 or the 10. They're starting from the 30 because it was a horrible punt. So you've given them almost the half the field to work with. This is the NFL, man. These guys are going to score. At least make it difficult for them to score. You got to march up that 80 yards or their 85 yards and 90 yards. Not 50, not 65. So Matt Areza, I'm looking forward to seeing how he, how he establishes himself on this team. I really hope it works out really well. We did it. We nailed it. We nailed it. We absolutely nailed it with our guy, Tyler Bass. So I'm hoping that we do the same with our guy, Matt Areza. We'll see how that plays out. So those, that's my fourth guy. So coming back at it, Zach Moss, Tremaine Edmonds, Dane Jackson, Matt Areza. I'm looking at those four players. Matt Areza more so because you're the rookie, and I want to see how this is going to help us by flipping the field. I mean, special teams is everything. And then we've got, and then we've got, uh, we got those two players, and you guys, you, you already know my explanation. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. This is going to be a long off season. It's going to be a long season, one game at a time, and it starts Thursday night against the Rams. I read, I think it was, uh, I think Zach is the one who told me this. Zach told me that the Vegas has the Bills as the favorites in every single game. If they have us favorites in every single game that we're going to play, I mean, it really means that we're going undefeated, right? <laughs> Could it be possible? Can we get that number one seed this year? Is that what we're going to go? Are we going to be going for that? I mean, I don't see why not, man. Win that division. Win the division. And then try to get that number one seed. Because there's going to be some teams beating each other up. The AFC North, they're going to be beating each other up in that AFC North. The AFC West, they're going to be beating each other up over there. They're going to be beating each other up. I don't, I don't see guys that are going to be going 13-3, and 13-4, and four, you know what I mean, 15-2. and two. They're going to be beating each other up. The best opportunity for these Bills is to, is to win our division. I think we are probably, are we, in the, are we in the weakest division? No, AFC South is pretty damn weak. I'm just saying. So, that being said, it'll be fun. So, uh, update, guys. So, I'm going to be in Buffalo with uh, with my man, uh, Zbot. We're going to be going to the West Her, um, some some uh, some event uh, being put on by West Her. Uh, Bills players are going to be there. We're going to be trying to do content creation. We're going to try to interview the players and get into that. So, maybe maybe I'll sneak in the John Feliciano. Yo, what are your thoughts on that, John Feliciano? I mean, who knows? We'll see. I, I don't know what to expect. Um, but it's going to be fun. And uh, Zbot is going to be a second year doing this. So he's already a veteran in the game. So we'll see uh, how that plays out with my man Zbot, man. So, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing the damn thing. So I'll be in buff. So if you guys, I think me and Zbot are going to, I think we're going to try to go to Arby's. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I say, yo, we're going to go to Arby's and we're going to test out Arby's. So, uh, yo, hit me up on Twitter and be like, yo, where you guys at? And if you guys want to meet up with us and, and hang out and chop it up, this is your time. I'm not in Buffalo often. I'm trying to go to home opener. If y'all are trying to go to home opener, hit your boy up. Yeah, we're going to try to tailgate and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Jeff King, we're going to make it out to home opener, man. We got to make this out, man. So uh, my man Pierre, Rev, we're going to all try to be there. And if we all can be there and hit up y'all and we can have a tailgate, my man Don Trotman holds the best tailgates. So if Don, if you're watching right now, you catch the show later on, 
set it up. A night game? Can't go wrong with that. I can't go wrong with that for the first game, man. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. Jason N says, "Yo, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be September September 18th. All right, <laughs> Teddy, Teddy, Nate Peterman. You know what it is, man. We gotta give. You gotta give a shout out to Nate Peterman. I think this is a thing. I love that. Giving shout out to Nate Peterman is the shit. I love it. It's a thing now. Anytime that I can have the opportunity to bring up Nate Peterman, I'm gonna do it. Nate Peterman. That's what I'm talking about. Um, wife's like, yo, shut your fucking ass up. You can wake the kids up. I apologize." But yeah, man. Um, so you guys already know what it is, man. Catch me every Tuesday night, every Friday night. And uh, what I'm going to be doing now is alternating my weeks because I tend to. The wifey, the wifey made a comment the other day, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Reading between the lines, I know what you're saying. I didn't really get to see you, but I know you do your football stuff and yada yada. So I was like, "Okay, okay, I see what you're saying." So Friday nights, you want me to hang out with you? I get it, right? So I'm going to be trying to alternate my my week so there's gonna be one week that i go on friday and then one week that i go on thursday so i'm just giving you guys a heads up now so um so if you don't see me on friday that means you're gonna catch me on thursdays and we'll go from there so that's it for me folks i appreciate y'all i appreciate the fact that y'all give me your time i i can't stress this enough you don't have to be here but i keep you somewhat entertained enough that your ass is here watching with your boy and i appreciate everyone that's been watching us for years that have been watching us for two and a half years three years and seeing the growth and i think that's what the fun part is for me where you've seen us go from what we used to be called the message board the disrespect and hey, that old message board well the message board that used to be the message board is now the one of the bigger bigger bills brands that are out there now and we're everywhere from tiktok to twitch to you name it we're there and I got, a, I got a quick question for y'all, too, because we do have a Twitch account, and I just picked up Madden maybe like a, like a few weeks ago. It was a few weeks, a few weeks ago that I picked up Madden, and I'm going to try to get back into Madden. So I might even, you know, when you start doing some live, live shows and just, you know what I mean, going live and, and just doing my own thing on Madden or playing one of y'all on Madden. I don't know. It's the offseason, man. The offseason, this is the dead time of the offseason. So... It's just, uh, it's just one of those things, man. <laughs> yo, Nabdi says, yo, but I, I missed y'all message boards, though. No, I mean, y- you got to start somewhere. You can't, we can't take away from, from the, you know what I'm saying, message board. But you know what I mean? When they try to disrespect you, because it was not, it, was a, it wasn't a term of endearment. It was like, oh, you know, the, the, the old message board. No, no, no. We're bigger than a message board, man. This is digital now. We're digitally everywhere. Put some respect on our name. That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, much appreciated for everybody, man. So maybe I might try to do some streaming. Who knows, man? Who knows, man? I see. I'll see what. It, I'll see how this plays out. My man Roger says, "You guys are the only Bills channel I can watch without getting bored." You know what, though? I'm gonna leave that up there. I appreciate that because anytime that I'm watching content, nonetheless, I need something that keeps me entertained the whole way. If you can keep me for five to ten minutes, then you got me. You know I mean, and there's some places out there. And not just Bill's content creators. I'm talking about just create content creating it all together. You got to keep someone's attention. And the fact that I was able to keep your attention and I got the, I mean, I have the ability to, I don't know how I do it. I just do. And it's fun for me. And it's going to, I'm going to continue to do this as it still becomes fun for me. I'm going to keep rocking. But when I see stuff like that, it's appreciative. I really do appreciate that riser. Uh, and if I'm able to keep your attention, I've done something. So if you guys appreciate the show, you know what to do, man. Throw the microphone up there. You know what I'm saying? If it was a dud and you, you hated it, throw the potatoes up there. I'll take the potatoes and I'll turn them shits into french fries. But throw the mics on the mic. Throw the mics on the screen. Show your boy some love and uh, we'll go from there, man. So, folks, that's it for me. Appreciate y'all. Catch you on the flip side. So, I'm going to be at Buffalo this weekend. Um, so, I'm leaving Sunday morning and I'm gonna, I got to fly into Dot. I got to see some family in Toronto and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive into uh, the border. Yo, for Canadians that are in this chat, by the way, do I need uh, a PCR test to drive into the United States? Every time I try to look it up, it's like it's not giving me the information I need. So if you guys know, hit me up on my Twitter. Do I need that? I don't think I do. I think they changed it. But anyway, if you know, hit me up and uh, we'll go from there. 
We'll catch you on the flip side. Follow your boy right here. Rico underscore BF underscore. And then we go from there, man. If I have a chance to meet y'all in Buffalo, let's do it. Hey, let's do it. Hey. So anyways, you guys have a good one. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. It's your boy Rico. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And until next time, it's your boy. You know what it is, right? And I'm gone.